Good day everyone. I hope everyone uh, is doing pretty well and happy. Uh, my name is Carl from comfortablylost.com. Um, the following video is a fairly onerous and detailed uh, installation video that I made last week that details the setup and installation of a Enerdrive DC to DC uh, charger. The reason that we chose this thing over the other options is because it's compatible with a smart alternator which is found in the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter and other similar models and also with our uh, lithium battery bank that we have down there as well because it has programmable um, outputs which is a really neat feature and it's really handy if you do have a, have a lithium battery. Anyway, I'll get to it. Uh, check out the video. As I said, it's long and onerous and I go over the same information a few times over, but I think it's in, it's informative and there's not really anything else out there on YouTube or on the internet uh, when I was looking up trying to get some info. So yeah, hopefully it helps someone out there. Check it out. Right, what are we doing? So this is something that I've been meaning to do for a few months. It's a DC to DC charger. And this is the uh, Enerdrive uh, DC to DC, I think it's like a 40, 40 amp plus, 12 volt one. So good little unit. This can actually take a solar input as well as your um, alternator input. But today I'm only doing a uh, alternator, alternator DC feed in. And this unit here is particularly good because it has uh, programmable output. So that's going to work for the lithium battery system that we have here. And hopefully uh, it's gonna work in tandem with the uh, Victron um, MPPT uh, solar charge control that I have already installed. So I haven't done much so far. Um, really all, all I've done so far is I've pulled up the uh, floor, I've gotten to the battery box. So this is where the starter battery is inside here. In Australia, it's in the passenger side. I'm pretty sure it's always on this side of the van, no matter which country it is. But yeah, it's under there. There's a little icon on the side step saying that there's a battery in there. So all you need is a um, is just a little uh, T, T20 or T25 tool to open up the screws and remove the plastic cover and the metal cover of the battery. And always, when you're working the battery, there's just under here, there's a little um, quick connect, quick disconnect. Um, always disconnect that when you work in the battery just in case you accidentally cut through something so you don't give yourself a shock. Um, and then the next thing I did was pull off, pull up all the flooring. So you'll see here there's actually, just in here, this black plastic thing is actually a uh, fuse holder. And the type of fuse that you need, um, here we go. This is it. So it's called like a, a MIDI fuse or an ANS fuse. So it's just like a little chunky square inline sort of thing. Um, and that just goes into that plastic, um, black plastic fuse holder that's in there. This is the fuse holder. It's just bolted on. You just have to undo this little bolt and kind of take the unit out. And it has a little black uh, plastic cap that goes on top. So these are the little fuses here. That's the, uh, the new one that I've just added, 70, 70 amp. And then from there, you can route your cable underneath and across. So that's what you wanna use if you're adding a uh, secondary battery or a uh, DC to DC charge or anything like that. You can use the um, pre-supplied pre um, little fuse holder. And they give you two, well on my van they had two spare spots that you have to BYO uh, bolts, uh, nuts. So yeah, anyway, just to show you, that's what it looks like. They neatly fit in and it goes back in. This little bit here drops down, bolts back in place with the plastic cap on, and then you can pack the battery away and uh, keep them going from there. So what I'll do is I'll um, insert the fuse. I'm gonna get my six gauge uh, cable power, uh, like a red power feed cable. That's gonna run underneath the seat here into the under seat area. And then it's gonna run through here, uh, route it kind of underneath along the bottom here. There's like a little removable backboard that I run all the cables upon. These are the existing cables. I'm gonna be upgrading the earth cable anyway. And then that runs through the corner here into the battery box. 
and I've got a circuit breaker um, already allocated for the DC um, input and I've got the, um, the earth and power terminals there as well. So just, just a matter of hooking it in, connecting it on, and then hopefully it all works. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm also doing an upgrade to my earth. So I'm going to see if I can try and focus it. This is a, I think it's two gauge, either two gauge or zero gauge um, cable. And I'm upgrading that from the uh, current cable, which is a six grade, a uh, six gauge, sorry, not six, six grade. So that's just under here. So underneath the seat, there's a bunch of um, factory bolt-on um, sort of negative mounting points. Um, so I'll be, up, I'll be removing that and recycling this cable here and using it for something else. And I'll be running through a new uh, cable. So yeah, that's just for the future upgrade. If we add a, add a uh, like a thousand watt inverter or something, you need to have a, a thicker negative cable running to the chassis. So that's it there. So if you're looking at doing a, an upgrade yourself, that's the sort of thing that you're going to have to do. Pull up all the floor, open the battery box, get access to your seat and hopefully you have your battery somewhere relatively accessible. I'm going to mount, I mean, you can see this thing is pretty big and they say to mount it vertically because it's got like a, the little air vents, where are they here? It's a little air vent in the back. I'm not going to be able to mount it vertically. I can't mount it upside down, but I probably will mount it um, sideways in here and then route the cables sort of down out of the way so nothing's touching or rubbing on anything and uh, use a bit of uh, this split tubing as well just to cover it up and make sure it doesn't get cut when it's bouncing around the box. All the flooring is back in, all the cables have been routed under. Um, I've got the, so for the Enerdrive they ask to put a, uh, a cable from the ignition so this underneath the driver's seat there's one from the alternator, one a hot power source, and there's this one here. Oh, sorry about the focus. And this one here with the black and yellow cable, that is the ignition lead. Um, so I've got that running to an inline fuse holder with a one amp fuse, and that's gonna run through, pair up with a power cable and the new earth cable that I've got installed here. And um, that just sort of runs along the side there and underneath, and then that's gonna go into the battery box and link up from there. So one thing that I would definitely recommend to anyone doing upgrades is one of these, it's a hydraulic um, crimp and it's pretty awesome. It uh, makes crimping the um, lugs on big heavy duty cable uh, so much easier than, easier and neater and better. So if you're doing this sort of work at home, get yourself one of these, they're not expensive, you can buy them on eBay for so $20, $30, uh, they're not too much. They come with all the different different dyes. So everything's wired in. I've got the uh, new negative line uh, attached on. I've got the new power cable from the starter battery that runs through. There's the fused uh, ignition cable here that runs through as well. It's all routed through along there behind the wall into the battery box and connected here to the DC to DC um, charger as well. So I guess the only thing is if you are looking to install a uh, inner drive or a similar DC to DC, uh, there's a few things to keep in mind. Uh, the way that I have it installed here isn't ideal. It really should be uh, vertical, like horizontal is okay, upside down is definitely a no-go because there's a ventilation at the back here and it kind of pulls air through the bottom. So ideally, uh, this should be placed vertically and it also probably shouldn't be so close to the battery and above the battery. It should be sort of away from the battery and uh, sort of have a sort of seven or ten centimeters, say three inches um, space all around it for airflow. Uh, it should be okay. I think there is still plenty of space around it. And if I find that it starts getting warm in here and this unit starts getting warm, I'll add in a little DC 12 volt uh, computer fan in here and have that on temperature sensor um, just to vent the uh, box here. So yeah, just keep that in mind. The way I have it installed isn't ideal. It's not the 100% the right way. 
it should function. I've made sure that everything's secured and it's all tied down. Nothing should move. Um, and any you know sharp edges or whatever are all protected so it should be okay but yeah if you're doing it yourself try and give yourself a bit more space uh, put it in maybe like an electrical cupboard rather than packing it all into a box because you start to run out of space um, that's all I can think of for now um, it's pretty straightforward it's just a here's the ignition um, cable that's there from the front underneath the seat uh, there's a power in and there's the power out that goes over through a circuit breaker and over to the distribution bar and over to the battery. And then there's a, an, uh, a negative that goes over to the distribution panel. And there's also another negative, a little small negative cable, which is for the unit itself. So as long as you have all those connected up, you just follow the instructions that come with the booklet. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. My next, uh, next step now is to uh, put the seat back on and set up the uh, charging parameters and then take it for a drive and see how it goes. So yeah, hopefully um, hopefully this helps someone else out there. I better get back to it. It's pretty warm in here actually. I've had it all closed up and the fans off because the power's off. So I'll get back to it, put this all back together and hit the road and I might do an update or I might leave it at this. So any questions, comments, uh, always leave it down below or send us an email through our website, Comfortably Lost. Dot com. All right. Thank you. Bye.